Well, I guess we can start our show now, Jim. I don't really have a, a clear way to get this going. It's My- easy. How is it easy? You simply say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, now is the time where myself and Jim are going to speak. Okay. Ta- ta- da- da. Jeez, I, that was easy. That was very easy. I might have to pull that and just use that for- What's the name of the show? We're, this is the movie hour. The movie Jim. hour. And how long is this going to happen? 30 through? minutes. The movie hour in 30 minutes <laughs> or less. Now we're going to give you one hour of- of movie news, but I don't want to beat around the bush here. We're going to introduce ourselves real quick. I'm Braden Clark. I am the host of the movie hour and my co-host along the journey is Jim Stevens. I'm Jim Stevens. That's right. Uh, I am also known as James Christensen Stevens when I'm in trouble. So you just let me know, Brady, Braden, Braid, Bedeon. Yeah, Braden. You let me know when I'm in trouble and you say James and I'll, I'll stop. Jimmy Smooth Jimmy as well. Jimmy Smooth. Yes. But I don't want to be around the bush. Our our main guest today is the one, the only, Ryan Templeman. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Wait, and I'm not the only oh, Ryan yeah, There's Templeman. no way you're the only Ryan Templeman. No, I'm not. There's another one. Where? Uh, he actually was in Utah for a little while. He okay. was... Um, uh, What'd you do to him? Uh, well, nothing. He actually did terrible things to me. He was a, a meth dealer. Oh, my goodness. And he had a, yeah, Ryan D. Templeman. And, and he wouldn't and he, give you, like, a good deal? So No, he wouldn't give me a t- He gave me terrible oh, deals. What a terrible guy. No, he got into all kinds of trouble. And ah. then I would get pulled over and, like, people would, and the police, were, you know, doing their job. <laughs> it would give me hell all the time. Maybe I should reintroduce you as w- the one... Ryan Templeman we want on the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who doesn't, who doesn't the smoke Ryan Temple, crystal The Ryan Temple we're allowed to have on the show. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is good for FCC reasons. Right. Absolutely. Well, Ryan, the par- the reason why Jim and I wanted to, we love movies for one thing, but we also wanted to highlight local town in the state of Utah and what it's like being an actor in Utah. And Jim has some experience with that as well, being an actor and being in movies. So kind of take us back to when you were a, like starting it out, like what made you really want to get into like the whole acting business? Well, fame and fortune, really. <laughs> uh, all the money. I, yeah, that's all I actually wanted was just the fame and the fortune. Um, and then just realized only too late that I had chosen like the hardest way to achieve those things. And then did it start like out of high school? I understand. Uh, <clears throat> how did you two meet? I guess is what I should start off by. I uh, hired him. You hired him? Yeah, that's right. I hired him to do uh, eight great ways to build a better uh, to build a better marriage by uh, Troy Dunn, the one and only uh, Troy Dunn, who is now on Doctor Phil. In he has like his own like weekly really yeah like spotlight uh, story thing that he does. And uh, does he still use the the stuff we made? I don't know because uh, we ain't seen no residuals. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that's the only reason I came in the studio today was to collect my residual check. The, money? the residual <laughs> check you promised me. Twenty years ago. to Wendy's. We those ten pennies that you get in those. <laughs> no, I hired him, um, and originally I hired him to be because uh, we needed a devil and an angel to you know to do the right way about marriage and the wrong way about marriage, and and I uh, hired him as the angel, oh. and then I hired the woman to play a devil, and Troy came on and said, I think people will have a problem. Uh, with a woman being the devil, I think that's saying the wrong thing. And so he made me recast Ryan as my devil. All right. And how, so not being, the first time I played the devil either. I'm, okay. <laughs> and how'd that role go for you? Oh, we made eights of sevens of dollars. Yeah. That's kind of going off with being an actor in Utah. I want to just kind of go off that demographic. I was like, what's that like for you? Like, um, it's, I mean, it's hit, hit and miss, right? There's, uh, before I got to the state, there was a lot more work. It feels like the moment that I moved here that it all dried up. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. You were on, um, uh, you were on the, uh, the what's the guy's name? He was uh, a murderer. He, uh, uh, yeah, he he did. What's his name? Uh, he uh, High School Musical. That's it. That's the one. That's oh, the one. <laughs> you mean the Ted Bundy origin yeah, Ted, story? Ted, Ted Bundy. That's Wasn't, the one. You worked with Ted Bundy. I did. I did do that. I did do that one. Um, I also did the 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 smoking one, the what Warriors Against Tobacco, Warriors against way tobacco. back in the day. Could you just <laughs> tell Brady one of my favorite stories of all time? Your your Warrior Against Tobacco was another actor, local actor. Yeah, he got into a little bit of some legal trouble. He did. What did he go to jail for? 
Uh, I believe it was, if my memory serves correctly, the news clip said that he uh, left his work of employment, went into his car, put on a bandana over his face, walked back in and robbed the, the store. <laughs> then he worked at. <laughs> All right. The pizza shop that he worked at, yeah. He yeah, essentially like if I walked into Buffalo Wild yes. Wings... Yeah. Walked out yes. just, and put on a ski mask. Give me your money. And he's just like, I and, want, I want some wings. Yeah, according to according <laughs> to someone wings. that the uh, the guy behind the cash register is like, hey, dude, Jim. dude, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw you walk out. I saw you put the ski yeah, mask. Yeah, I, I just I just took over for you. <laughs> I still think that is the funniest thing <laughs> ever. Just my opinion. I have a weird taste. So, anyways, so what was your first big film? Would you say that uh, you beat me out for um, here locally? That I beat you for? Uh, yeah. I think I beat you out to play Nate's brother. Yeah. In what was Donnie that? Darko Two? That's right. Yeah. Donnie Darko Five Two. Five auditions. I had to do five auditions for Donnie Darko Two. <laughs> the dialogue that I would make up in the auditions. Yeah. Is in the film. I said it. You said it <laughs> and played my brother's brother. That's right. Congratulations, by the way. I just was a better brother to him than you were. <laughs> he, he probably would still. He probably agrees. Yeah, to this day. <laughs> so what was it like, uh, I don't know, booking roles and and all that here? Like, if I were in high school right now and wanting to become an actor, what what is like the process of one to do that here? Um, so when I started, I started back in Toronto, Okay. um, and I started doing just stage stuff in high school. Um, and then I got a, an agent, one of my friends, older brothers was working at an agency in Toronto and they were looking to like get younger talent, a little bit younger than, uh, 18 or so, uh, for work that's coming through lots of commercial work and things like that. And so he was like, can I just take your picture and hang it on the wall in the, in the office? And so that it looked like he was working. And then they called me. Sketchy a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't actually like sign anything with them. I just was like, they just hung my picture there. And so, um, the agent that worked at the place was like, Oh, send this one out. And so he called me and like told me where to go. And I just went to a place and I booked a, a commercial. And the first thing I really, whatever went out for and, did that for, I don't you know, maybe book two or three. And then when I came to Utah, I was like, hey, I've already done commercial work. And the agents here were like, really? <laughs> so they were like, yeah, I, I signed with us. So I, was, <clears throat> so I did. I just signed with the uh, uh, McCarty Talent Agency here in town. And then... They're, they're like the longest running local yeah. agency right now. They're Yeah, and they're great. Yeah. And I, you know, they're, uh, they've Suzy, got a pretty Suzy, big talent pool. Susie's fantastic. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I met with uh, all the agencies, and I just chose to go with them. I just got the best vibe from from their agents. I didn't take it terribly serious because I didn't take it seriously. Um, and then I started. Then they sent the first thing they sent me out for was actually that uh, Warriors Against Tobacco, oh. and I booked that um, with Chip. You know Chip. Chip's my boy. He hooked. He hired me to do the Arctic Circle commercial. That's right. Yeah. yeah. For those of you that. A lot of part of my adolescence was trying to convince my friends that my uncles were in movies. <laughs> I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And then as soon as Jim over here, who's hiding behind the, the computers, he's uh, <laughs> he was, how would you say, one of the faces of Arctic Circle? I was the face of Arctic Circle for two years. Like, or, yeah. uh, the, what was the, the campaign? Uh, the Quest to Pluto? The, <laughs> That's what uh, it was. I think I, you beat me out for that yeah, world, sure didn't did. you? Yeah, Because uh, Chip called me before the scripts were even final. Yeah. And was like, hey, man, I got a spot for you. And I was like, cool. Just tell me where and when. And then <laughs> and then uh, he sends me a message like, they went with someone else. Yeah, and I Jim. was like, who? And he's like, do you know a guy named Jim Stevens? I was like, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. It does. Us, it goes so back and forth. That's why yeah. like, we kind of, either we could have like become mortal enemies and hate each other. We can just... I, I know I've done well that if I'm at the callback, uh, Ryan steps in and I'm like, 
all right, now we're down with the, cause there's usually about five to seven, eight people that get to a callback after thousands of people go to the initial audition. Mm-hmm. So when you're down to like seven people left and the other one's Ryan, I'm like, chances are <laughs> one not of a us, bad person. One of us is going to yeah. make this one. Yeah. I always, I always feel like I'm in the, I'm in the room with the Stevens brother almost every time. <laughs> yeah. I, because going back off to what I was uh, saying is a lot of my child, I grew up with Nate and Jim and Dave and somewhat Mike, all of my uncles. You can hit me if you want, if you want to, I, I was told not to, to infer that you are. No, just you don't call related. me uncle Jim. I didn't say it. I just, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I grew up watching. Don't look under the bed. Don't look under the bed. That was the big one with, with Nate. He was, like the, See how hard the brother. it is for not to say Uncle Nate. I've I've had it I've had it ingrained in my brain for. Yeah, so but long. now we're doing something professionally. Exactly, and I can't. Now he's well, just Nate. Just Nate. Well, yeah. He was also in Cokeville Miracle. Cokeville Miracle. And that we, was that was the one that I, I I used on dates all the time. Right. Because all right. To, uh, whenever I'd go on dates up at Utah that, State with uh, LDS, my uncle LDS blew up girls, a bunch of little babies. I would bring up. <laughs> That's what that one was. I would bring up the Cokeville Miracle movie, and it was. T.C. Christensen, yeah. I think, is the mm-hmm. name of the director. And, like, oh, I, I love that movie. I was like, oh, yeah, my uncle is the bad guy. He blew up the kids. And, and, and then they're like, for real? And I was like, no, not the actual guy, yeah. but the, the, the actor, the, the actor the movie. in the movie. They thought I, like, I was related to the crazy yeah. the crazy guy that actually blew up the school. See, Were you more or story? less interesting when they found out he was the actor? I think I was See, less interested. See, that's interesting. funny because that's the only he's had to do the stories. Uh, his older brother uh, Steve, we actually got Adam Sandler to do his campaign video oh, yeah. to run for class president. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah, online. and yeah. so like, and so everyone's like, so I, I remember my sister saying one time, she's all like, um, "Jennifer, you need to talk to your son." She's he, about what? She's like, um, "He's been telling people that your brothers are in a movie with Adam Sandler and that it's coming out." And he, she's like. <laughs> Oh no no that's you know my my brothers are in a movie with Adam Sandler so when he showed up with a tape of Adam Sandler campaigning for his presidency saying that he was going to give him free chocolate free, whatever no, yeah. free that's, chocolate for the rest of the year or something like it that it was awesome uh, that was another uh highlight of mine mm-hmm. i remember another on my verge to becoming an actor it was very short lived but I remember I, I had watched a movie. I can't pick the movie that it was, but I was like, I want to, I want to be in an act. I think actually it was I was watching Nine Hundred Two One Zero on on TV. <laughs> oddly enough, and I was like, I want the the, which, the reboot one. The reboot. Yeah, I was gonna okay. say because okay. I watched Nine Hundred Two One Zero, and that's what. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No, the <laughs> reboot uh, on like the CW or whatever it was, and I remember <laughs> like googling's like acting classes or something like that in Utah, and I went to some acting like. They they pooled all the people into one room for only four thousand dollars, and they they had everyone okay come up and say say your lines in front of this said casting director person, and then I and I go up to him and he's like, oh well, you we like what your look and you're tall and that's something that we're looking for, but you're not quite developed yet. So if you take our acting classes for the summer, like three thousand dollars a month, yeah, then we can see what we can work with. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, I probably won't do that ever again. And then I told my mom, and then I get a phone call from Jim saying, he's like, hey, schlub. <laughs> you know I teach classes, like, right? you, know, you know I'm an acting coach, right? I was like, are you? <laughs> I have no idea. That's how you got to meet a bunch of cool people. So yeah, All right, let's watch movies again. Enough about how awesome Ryan is and uh, how, and yeah, how I don't awesome. I'm not even sure that segment went really well. No. You don't think so? No, I'm just kidding. I was like, I... We didn't even get to. Let's go back to like your you and I. Just kind of want to talk about the movies that. You, what are you working on? You we kind of talked about it a little bit, but I want kind of to hear it again because. Yeah, I'm. Uh, oh gosh, I spend uh, most of the time working in my production company. I've got here in production Salt company Lake. is called. Oh yeah, my production company is called Parking Garage Pictures, and uh, my, my partner and I we've got. Uh, and your partner is Joel Petrie. Jesus, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you get those plugs. I know. Yeah, I'm so good at this. <laughs> um, yeah, and we spend most of our time doing um, post production work for uh, films that kind of come through town. Or yeah, but you've also released feature films yourself. Yeah, yeah, we have done our How own many films. Now? We've done 
two feature films ourselves. We've sold one worldwide, all territories worldwide, um, to a company out of New York. And then the other one we were doing a self-distribution model on, which is kind of exciting. And I think the way that most films are actually going to start going here, independent films are moving towards self-distribution. Um, and what are those films named and where can they find them? Um, let's see. The one is a uh, called Slender. And that is on every VOD platform. Um, I, I don't know what the Rotten Tomato score is. Is this before the Slender Man? <clears throat> yeah, it was, was way made. before. It was. We actually uh, we beat Sony to that property by about five years. Yeah. There's okay. also a, a Which interesting better. cameo uh, at the beginning of that film. There right? is. Yeah, Jim is in that. Really? Yeah, Jim yeah. is in that movie. It's a it's a found footage horror film uh, that is about two documentary filmmakers that are like trying to find a subject matter to, to create a documentary about, and they run into this crazy woman. <laughs> um, Millie Parks. Yeah. Is and, it Millie? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and she um, she's fantastic in it. She plays this. We actually put her on a train, and like so she had to go from point A to point yeah. B, and we had all these hidden cameras, and we had just say, all right, Millie, go. Like, be crazy. And she went for it. Oh, yeah. She totally went for <laughs> it. Like, crazy. people were worried about her. <laughs> yeah, people were on the platform. By the time we got there with the rest of the crew and we caught up to her, like, people were on the platform, you like, okay? concerned for it. We had, like, <laughs> PAs. We had a couple of people that were on the train that were supposed to, like, keep the passengers away from them. And they were, like, oh, people were, like, getting on their cell phone to call 911 because this lady's claiming that she's lost her kids. And she's, like, lost her mind. <laughs> and so... We filmed the whole thing uh, as, like, found footage, and, uh, yeah, our, thankfully our PAs prevented people from calling the cops, but she plays this character, and then the documentary filmmakers follow her, and then they find out that she believes that a, a tall, slender man has stolen her children away from them, and, like, the documentary filmmakers kind of follow down this rabbit hole of, like, trying to figure out uh, whether it's real or fake, but they themselves become kind of, like, pranksters. They want to, like create a reaction in this woman so they dress up one of their characters as uh as the slender man character okay to try and scare the bejesus out of her and then all hell breaks loose at the end that's interesting i have you seen the slender man movie the one that came out nope two years ago i think it was and i watched everything <laughs> you, you didn't watch it either watch did you it. watch ours uh i watched my part yeah I don't really watch anything that I mean either. I don't like watching movies on it. But I edited that one. <laughs> I do, however, the guys at work like to watch my Steven Seagal movie and make fun of me to oh, no yeah. end. That, that was a good, what was that one called? That doesn't matter. Code of Honor. <laughs> Code of Honor. <laughs> it's terrible. Steven Seagal's a great, great, great dude. Great guy. And the other one that you can see is uh, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. I yeah, believe that, that was, I believe that was written by uh, Julius yeah, Bill. Caesar. Bill Shakespeare. Oh, Bill Shakespeare. Bill Shakespeare. Sorry, there are people with the last name Shakespeare still. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he. Billy uh, Ray Shakespeare. Billy Ray. <laughs> Billy Ray Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, we did that one in conjunction with uh, Utah Valley University, and it's kind of a cool little project to be involved in. We it started out as a multimedia presentation, so the characters what are out on a stage. So mm. they were doing like a stage presentation of Romeo and Juliet, and then as they would run off the stage. On the video screen behind them, they would project scenes that would be taking place kind of away from the, the front of the stage. So you're watching a movie and a, a play at the same time. So the school hired us to do just the video aspect of it because we were a production company. And we got the budget back and uh, Joel, my partner, was like, hey, do you think we could just do the whole movie for this budget? And I was like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so, find out. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so we just... So we hired a uh, local department heads, people to like be, you know, head of wardrobe and, and the camera department and things like that and sound. And then we got the students to be all the crew essentially. And they were also all the actors because they were part of the, the show. So we shot the whole movie and then we released it as kind of like a pilot for trying to figure out how to self distribute and, and navigate those waters. And so, yeah, you can watch that one. It's online. I think the, the best place to watch it in 4K is on Vimeo. Part of the reason why I wanted to bring it local actors to find out how to support 
these local Utah films. Mm-hmm. How? What's the best way? I imagine there's like the Utah Film um, Society that ha- you guys have a place where you. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's lots of like little organizations that exist around town. That there's the uh, Utah Film Center is here. There's a Utah Artist Foundry um, that kind of helps promote the uh, local artists. So if you're like you're a young artist and you're trying to figure out how to get into meeting people who are actually making films and you yourself want to help contribute to that in whatever way, shape or form, you know, the, the Utah artist foundry is really cool. They do producers, uh, workshops and, and PA certification and writers group. And that's, that stuff is pretty fun. Um, and then like, as far as films go, I mean, the, there's one coming out, not, not too long. The other side of heaven too. Oh, I've I've seen that. Okay, well, yeah. I've seen so that's Mitch that. Davis is um is doing a sequel to, to one that he did while he was at Disney. Okay, so that's uh never heard of them. You never heard of Disney? Disney? <clears throat> yeah, small company, obviously. Yeah, yeah. independent movies. Yeah. Uh, they're on their way up, though. I think they'll be all right. Hmm. Maybe uh, we're actually going to talk here in a minute about a Disney film. Should we? That we had to go. I mean, it's probably the best way to bridge it over to some of the new films that we had to go see this week. You you didn't, oh, yes. <laughs> you didn't see either of these films. I did not see either of these However, films. However, you know of the filmmakers. I know of them, yes. So why don't we go right into... Yeah, might as well. We can transition. Uh, right. So the first film that Brady and I went to as a new team, we went and saw a Disney film called Us. Disney? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very Disney-centric. Nope, nope, nope. I think I got that backwards. You might have. I think... It's a Tim Burton film called Us. Yeah. Nope. Oh. Nope. Nope. Even you're getting warmer. Getting close. Jordan Peele's Us. Yeah, very close. Did I get there? Yeah, I think you got there. Around. I got there. Should Eventually. I ask you guys questions about it? Let go, me go let ahead. Me, let me let me just set it up. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes has gotten a ninety four percent critic score and a seventy six percent audience score so far. IMDb's given it a seven point four out of ten stars. Um. It was directed by Jordan Pill, who, of course, normally comes from a comedy background, but his first uh, film, uh, Get Out, won him an Oscar. And this one now comes back with, uh, oh, man, I should not even, I know her name, but Lupita Nyong'o. Yep. Uh, Oh, man, I'm just, okay, Winston Duke. great. Yeah, uh, Shahadi Wright Joseph. Even Alex, Elizabeth Moss, and Tim Heldeker. Um, they basically get held and tortured by their own doppelgang- doppel- doppelgangers. Doppelganger, yeah. Interesting. I had more trouble with doppelgangers than I did Lupita with... Lupita Nyong'o. <laughs> Lupita Nyong'o. So yeah, ask questions. Yeah, so what I like about... I, I, don't, I haven't seen Us, but I like about Jordan Peele and his... His style, kind of like you said, he's got comforts from like a comedic background. I like the like psychological thriller horror kind of thing that has a little bit of this film comedy hilarious. to it. Yeah, so that's that's the thing where I was so shocked going into the movie is because if you watch the trailer, you're you're anticipating a frightening film. I was re- I was and there was some disturbing stuff. Yeah, and there's there's mm. parts in the movie that kind of it's a weird feeling like it. Very suspenseful. I kind of liken it to how suspenseful Scream can be. Right. Like kind of on the highs of Scream. But it's a lot more funny than I... There's some hilarious, hilarious stuff. I I need to watch it again. Probably go see it by myself. Because we were sitting next to this guy (laughs) who would not (laughs) shut up. And he stunk. And uh, yeah, nearly gave Jim a panic attack. And I have panic. And like at one point, he's because this, and I, I created a character out of him now. At one point, he's just sitting there. Oh wow, there sure is a lot of bunny rabbits. <laughs> Legit, that's quoted. And when NWA went, there's a scene in the movie when NWA F the police. F the police. The guy goes. <laughs> guy goes, wow, this is a great song that they wrote for this movie. <laughs> it's very interesting. So I, I don't I don't know if I was taking out of the movie, of the scary part, just because I was listening to this guy yeah, talk yeah. the entire time. But I laughed a lot more yeah. than I was ever really terrified. Right. Well, I they, think, so the dad buys this crappy boat, right? Because they go to the the river and or the lake, and that's where the family comes. I mean, there's so much more to it, but he buys this crappy boat, and nobody wants to get on the boat. And so at one point, this doppelganger family is trying to like, and so he's 
dad doesn't can't quite figure out because he doesn't know he's in a horror film. And he's all like, you can have whatever you want. And they're like, Dad, I don't think they want anything. He goes, okay, you can have the boat. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then one Nobody goes, wants a boat. Nobody wants the boat, Dad. <laughs> like uh, Winston, what's his, what's his last name? Win- the, the, the main actor. The lead actor, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Winston, Winston Duke. Duke. That's what it was. I needed to just say it again. That sounds like an actor name. It, 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 Doesn't that sound like him, an actor name? Him and Lupita Nyong'o. I think Lupita stole the movie. Oh, yeah. The two, yeah. the like the, the way her doppelganger is portrayed, and then herself. The, you, hear, you hear they're getting uh, feedback for that. Yeah, that was that. So she's getting in trouble because she's. I don't necessarily know so the she, reason why. So she's but. based her voice on people that have like a crushed um, larynx. Yeah, and so the way that her voice came out, she tried to mimic that. But, but the fact that she's the evil character in the movie, the people with the actual condition are coming back at her saying it's already got enough of a stigmatism to him. Why would you also make them a bad person? Yeah, why don't they just start an acting career and become the bad guys and everything? I was just shocked. I'm like, dude, you can't say anything. You can't do anything anymore without someone being offended. Which I, I thought, she, like, going off of that, I thought she was incredible. She was awesome. She was amazing. And the kids were awesome. Like, that's there was a. I've never seen these two kids in my life before, and they huh. and they had to play completely different people from who they actually are. Yeah. Like, and it was awesome. The little boy was. Like you have to play a they rabid were so dog. Spooky. Yeah, the, the, the little boy is probably the and the, the girl. Those are probably like the two creepiest scenes. I highly ever. suggest anybody go see that film. If you yeah. haven't seen it yet, go see us. It is okay. awesome. And I don't want to keep talking about it because I don't want to give anything away because yeah. I want to go see it again. But that movie was awesome. Yeah, like see, I, I loved it. I like that stuff. I like the. I like that. Like having the the roller coaster of emotions, right? Like where you're laughing and then. But it's almost like that nervous laughter. Like, I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable. And I wonder mm-hmm. if, like, the laughter in the room feels more like nervous laughter as rather than maybe more authentic. That's probably but it, exactly well, what. Well, the, 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 the F the Police song comes on because they keep talking to what's those Google Talk things, whatever. Oh, the, yeah, the, like the Alexas. The Alexa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alexa turn it up. Alexa, turn it down. And now all these murderings are happening. And they're like, Alexa, call the police. Off the pool, this <laughs> comes out. Gotcha. Like, so, <laughs> was, which, a, which I, I was, I was really worried to going to see this movie with Jim because I, I understand that you weren't, you weren't, a, you liked Get Out, but you weren't like head over heels with I it. I just was upset. I made everyone mad around me because I picked Get Out in like fifteen minutes, and I, so it was really loud. And I said, leaned over to who I was watching the movie with, and I went, "This is what's happening." As the movie went like silent. And so, like, everybody around me heard me, and I, one, the guy behind me goes, if you're right, I'm going to kick your... <laughs> like, they were not... And, and then, it, like, almost to a T happened the way I called it. And everyone's like, yeah, you say that now. And I'm like, okay, but you can ask. <laughs> I, just, I, I liked it. I thought it was okay, but I called it in 15 minutes. And I hate calling movies in 15 minutes. 15 minutes into the get out, I knew what was happening. Did you feel that same way with Us? Nope. I feel like Us wasn't the... It wasn't so prevalent on the twist. It's... Kind yeah. of like where Shyamalan, where he Shyamalan a ding dong. He yeah, when he re- uh, released Sixth Sense, then every single movie after that, everyone was like, okay, what's the what's twist? What's the twist? What's everyone the twist? has. Yeah. Whereas Jordan Peele, this one, it, uh, I went into expecting like, what's the twist? And then I I guessed it right as soon as the movie started, and then I was just like, okay. And then I was just like, oh well, now I I know what's gonna happen. But then I was like, I I, I need to rewatch it again because I was a little let down because I knew what was gonna ha- what was coming. I don't think that was huh. the point. Of yeah. the movie, well, I wonder if he. I, I wonder if yeah. he's cognizant of that. I wonder if he's right. thinking like M Night Shyamalan had Sixth Sense with a like crazy twist. I think he's and, more. I think he is more Hitchcock than he is Shyamalan. Ding dong. Yeah, and I I noticed a lot of like Hitchcock references mm-hmm. in Get Out, like lots of, and actually the whole movie felt like an homage also, to old horror movies. There's also three Lost Boys uh, references. Oh really? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Let's see. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you one right now. The uh, park that they that, that the movie starts at uh-huh. is the same park that the the kids from Lost Boys go for the comics and the, the oh they, really same same it's the, it's the same park oh interesting yeah there's a lot of anyways so as good as these kids were in this oh, film, brings us to our next film we went and saw Dumbo oh no <laughs> okay I hated Dumbo Dumbo was so bad so bad. 
The kids were so bad. So bland. Like, the girl literally was just one note the entire movie, just mo- monotonous. She, she was playing the super, like, they, I, could, I could sense, like, Tim Burton wanted her to be, like, Tim super, Burton. super smart, smarter than everyone, everyone else in the room. She's a scientist, but, child. Exactly, but she didn't do anything other than that. She's mm. just like, it's like, oh, well. Terrible. Science. Did she call them pachyderms? Pac- mm. I, no. 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 Isn't that what an elephant I is? I don't know. I'm yeah. not that smart. So that, that uh, was, <laughs> I felt like everybody was and Michael just, Keaton's worst performance I've ever seen. He was over the top. Like, everyone was so below, and then Michael Keaton was just, like, on, like, another level. Yeah. You're just like, whoa, what are you doing, Michael? Like... Danny DeVito was okay. He's fine. Colin Farrell was okay. Fine. Kid's terrible. Uh, bad, bad kid acting. Yeah. And I loved the elephant. If it could have just been the elephant, just following the elephant, I think I would have been fine. Been okay it, with it? But it that would have been only like 45 minutes. But apparently like the animated movie is only like less than an hour long. So like they they really stretched this Oh, really? One out. The old school one? Yeah. The 19, whatever that like one was? 40s, or, I think it was. 50 something, yeah. Yeah. No, it was awful, and I and I have I've had a problem with Tim Burton. He hasn't made a decent film since Big Fish. Like, how long ago was that? A long time. He has Nine, not made name a film since Big Fish that's any good. Mm. Big Eyes was okay. Yeah, I didn't mind that. Um, but one, did but he Frank has, and Weenie did he do that one? He did Frank yeah, and Weenie. Frank but and Weenie. he did Corpse Bride was Corpse all right. Corpse Bride yeah, Corpse and Bride. Uh, and but those are all now we're talking cartoons. We're yep. talking. I'm talking Tim Burton film. Yeah, yeah, film. And yeah, he's a great animator and he has a great mind. But he, why does he have to sit back and go? Can we make this more weird? Tim Burton. <laughs> well, yeah, it just the idea of just like Tim Burton's Dumbo. Like, if you Weird said that, pairing, like, two right? years ago, like, I, I feel like you'd be laughed out of a room. Yeah, <laughs> but someone, and someone said, I'm in. Yeah. yeah. I was like, let's do it Disney. What? Let alone Well, that's where he somebody. started. That's yeah, where, that's where he started. That's where he yeah, started. That's true. Yeah, I was like... So, but I don't know. That was that was so weird. And like, there wasn't much Tim Burton in in the movie. Where he's like, we you had watched, awesome seats. We had awesome seats yeah, in that one. We, we had, had like studio, like, we like laid back. back. We, were, laid back. we were secluded. They were, try, they were they, trying to get you to get a good review. There was for it. no. There was no <laughs> dude sitting next to me going. Well, there's a whole lot. But there were a lot of kids. There was a lot of kids there. Was there kids? Lots of kids. There was a lot of kids. There were so many kids. Like, it gave me realization that I'm like glad that I'm not gonna have any more kids. <laughs> Because it was a, like a sea of chaos. You know what I like about going to movies in Utah on Sunday is that it's usually Nobody's empty. Yeah. yeah, it's usually Nobody's empty, there. and you're like, oh, I like it. I, I like it. I really like it, especially in Utah County. There's mm-hmm. almost nobody in there, and that whole place is That's to right. yourself. You live down there, don't but you? But lately, yeah, lately, like more people, I've Growing. given up on Jesus. I don't know what's. <laughs> hap- I don't know what happens. They're just all of a sudden they start showing up. They're like <laughs> you, and they want to be in the theater by themselves. But like the entire movie. Didn't have any Tim Burton feel because you watch like Charlie Charlie and Ch- the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp one with oh yeah yeah, where you can totally tell this is definitely Tim Burton yeah. If you if you went into that movie and didn't know that it was Tim Burton, I yeah, don't think you'd be able to know. you would yeah. be able to tell except for the pink the, elephant the pink elephant scene. The pink elephant scene. Oh, they oh. have that sequence. Oh, it's in there. The, and it's actually know. probably the best part of the whole. Do they movie. have the racist crows still? Yes. No. no. Yes, they, yes, they do. Do they? Oh, it's in there. I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? yeah, 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 yeah. It's not as prevalent, but it's there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't throw anything out. It's there. Um, and the and the and it wasn't like a nightmare scene either. So it was actually they figured out a way to make the pink elephants. So they, he made it all practical. But it's um, as a matter of fact, Charlie and the Ch- Chocolate Factory. The only part of that movie that I absolutely loved is when <laughs> it's the reveal of. Of Willy Wonka and the whole set like starts melting mm. and he's and he's standing next to the little girl and she looks at him and she goes, Well, I wanted to see the show. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie for so long. I blocked it out to be uh, honest with you. But, all right, all right. So let's, that's let's, our yeah, we went through a, a long review of us because we love that film. We would definitely I would I would tell everyone I Ryan, go see it. Uh Dumbo. Uh, if your kid yeah. wants to see it. Put it on. Put it no, I'm not. And, uh, I won't do it. Leave. Go, go make a stiff drink and go do something else. Yeah. yeah. Leave, the, leave the room. I wouldn't even put it on for my nephew or niece. To, I just wouldn't do that because I like to think that there's more entertaining. It's a depressing movie. Like I Is don't it? think I don't think there's like a happy never moment. Never more in my life. I don't think there's a happier a happy moment in that entire movie. I can put like like even at the end of the movie, I like just you're just like this, this seems really just 
It's bum. Stupid. It's a bummer of a movie. Stupid elephants. <laughs> stupid kids. <laughs> so anyway, well, Jim, I guess we can move on to our our flashback. Yeah. Our... So now we're gonna do a little bit. Of, so obviously, normally, like as the shows go forward, we'll let you know. Me and Brady, we're gonna challenge one another to watch films. So that you as the audience can go and watch them with us. So that next week we will, the ones that at the end of the show we're going to challenge another with. Hopefully the idea is that you go home and watch them as well. We'll try to find them ones that are easier to find. So that next week when we discuss each other's film, it's something you've been able to go home and watch as well. So we don't want to just talk about new films. We want to bring in local filmmakers, talk new films. But then we want to talk about some films that we feel like you may have missed. Um, I challenged Brady with one of my childhood favorites, which is called Enemy Mine. Enemy Mine. Rotten Tomatoes of 59% and um, uh, uh, the audience award of 68%. IMDb, IMDb, I can't speak all of a sudden, 6.9. It is a uh, 1985 German-American science fiction film directed by Wolfgang Peterson. It right. was. Have you seen this one? I've not. Dude, uh. I, I love this movie so much. It makes it still makes me cry. It's got Dennis Quaid, Louis Gossett Jr. Basically, it's a soldier and the enemy. They both crash land on a deserted island, and they have to find a way to figure stuff out together or kill each other in order to make it through. And they decide to. Is it based on a book or a comic book? Made, or yeah, it's I, based on a book. I feel it's like a, I've. Okay. I mean, it's a it's a traditional story of like. Mm-hmm. Two enemies coming together. Yeah, to trapped sur- on a deserted island. Yeah, you've got to either make peace or you got to kill each other. Yep, exactly. It's not an island though; it's a planet. It's it's a, planet. it's, yeah. it's a space movie. So the enemy is a is a some like kind of roach looking like alienoid thing. I don't I wouldn't even know. They call him Drac. Louis think. Gossett Jr. Yeah. Well, I I really liked it actually. Did you like it? Yeah. I... Funny enough, so I watched it yesterday, and I was at my mom's. Like, yeah, I got to go home, and I got to rent Enemy Mine so I can do my homework for the, for our podcast tomorrow. Did you go to the Blockbuster? Uh, yes, <laughs> and it was <laughs> the yeah, last. No, we, is we, that we, where mom lives? That's we, the last. Oh, no, it's only not one, Alaska. It's in, it's in uh, Seattle. I thought it was in no, Washington. Oregon. Oregon. That's what it was. Oregon, weird, I think. Weird Oregon. No offense to Oregon. Anyway, I it was so Oregon. I that one closed. So okay. the last one's in Oregon. Anyway, so the I was watching the movie. And or no, I was searching on my mom's direct TV just to see if if it was on her because she buys all like the the cinema cinema films and stuff oh, like yeah. that, HBO and all that. So I was just making sure maybe it's on. Lo and behold, it's on cable television that day last night at like nice. eight eight eight, really? eight o'clock. So I went and we my mom and I we sat and watched it. Really really fun film. I really enjoyed. It was almost I I was sitting back there. It's like. It's almost kind of like a broke back mountain kind of. What? <laughs> I, what? I, I was I was honestly thinking <laughs> that, that they were going to fall in love. They were going to fall in love. There was a part in the movie and I think they kind of did in a way like, uh, like two brothers two brothers falling in, like in love. But they managed way. to quit each other. Yeah. And <laughs> it's basically like the alien doesn't speak English and the, he doesn't gotcha. speak English. And they learned each other's language and Yeah. And at one point, he says something along the lines of, screw your Mickey Mouse. <laughs> or, and that he thinks Mickey Mouse is like the Jesus the, character, the god oh, of, yeah. of, okay. yeah, of that, the human. Or is he not? He might be. <laughs> he's like, no. I think he's worshipped more. Well, this, this movie was a huge flop when it came out. Oh, yeah, that's what I, Huge like, flop. I looked up the uh, Rotten Tomatoes score. I was like, oh, 59. I gave him Paddington, not to spoil anything, but... That was that one's a lot higher ranked when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes. In your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but I I enjoyed it. It was it was a lot of fun. It's got a huge. It was really actually really really big in the Soviet Union when it came out. It really? was like a huge success, and now it has a huge cult following. Huh. Yeah. I was I was wondering. I was like, they needed to do a sequel. A oh, sequel. God. They should probably just <laughs> with Dennis remake Quaid. It. With Dennis Quaid as an older man, yeah. and then have the same kid because he's a, apparently he's still acting. The the kid that plays the oh, young, really? the young yeah. Uh, so when I was watching it, I was like, does Dennis Quaid ever age? No. He looks Mm-mm. the same from 1984 is when this came out? 1985. 1985 to like late 2000s. He, they cryogenically freeze him between movies. <laughs> that makes sense. Like he looks amazing in everything. Wait, not when you, Randy though. No, yeah. Not no, not, Ra- Randy. not Randy. No, 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 no. no they Randy. just let him take the crazy yeah, yeah. full, full sprint. Yeah. But if you, if you want to book Dennis Quaid though, you've got to like. Yeah, you've got to pay a lot up front to just get him thawed. Oh, good. 
takes him a while. That's yeah, why. Yeah, it takes him a little. That's while. why we don't see him anymore. You can't throw him in the microwave and hit the. That's not as important. The defrost, the defrost button. button. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Can't cook him. Anyway, well, uh, what's your opinions on Enemy Mine? Well, obviously, I picked it because this is one of my favorite films growing up, and um, I wanted you to watch something when I was a kid that I would every time go to Blockbuster, I try to rent this one and uh, the last uh, Starfighter. Oh yeah, and. My brother, Mike D, who's actually asked to come on the show, um, he would every time go, dude, we can't rent the same two films every single time we come in here. And I'm all like, <laughs> why not? Okay. Enemy mind. I hate you. <laughs> it but it's, I love it. I thought it was great. I love the fact that um, um, Louis, Louis Gossett Jr. ended up having a baby. Yeah. And then Louis passes away. And then... Um, spoiler, spoiler alert! alert. Spoiler, yeah. Well, it's, if you it's 1986. If if you missed it, it's 85. okay at this point. Um, so if so, then Dennis Quaid raises this kid, teaches him football, teaches him um, alien kid. A, he's an alien kid and raises him, and then then some some outsiders come in and kidnap the kid, and then it's he has to go in to get the kid back. So it's just one of those films. Like even to this day, I just has like I watch everything and this movie to this day i'm like enemy mine one of the good ones it's a good one i, I watched it and then as soon as it finished i turned to my mom's like that is the gym movie <laughs> and she's like yep and, yeah. but like i remember we were sitting there and we were watching it and my stepdad walks in he's like what are you guys watching and he doesn't watch movies mm-hmm. either and we was like oh we're watching enemy mine he's like that shit is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right. I so, told you. So like every person around that demo, uh, that age group yeah. loves this movie. So yeah. I was like, all right, let's, let's see what let's this watch is like. It. And I could definitely tell like, it's like CGI, like the, the space scenes, like not, doesn't hold up, but like, I think the story, the story is still does. there and it, 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 it's a good story to tell. Like other than your broke back, mountain theory <laughs> well i that's just I what i thought I, about that i just thought i saw because i think the reason why is because uh russ my stepdad said is like don't they bone in this scene <laughs> and i think that's what kind of like uh, engraved yeah how did he get the baby that's uh just kind of is a natural like oh okay. it's, a, it's they're they're not they're one asexual sexed in um they're like a frog yeah asexual they so just they just kind of switch it. they can switch male female all right so now Let's move to our Let's last film that. so we can wrap this thing up. Uh, Brady gave me Paddington. Great not movie. to be confused with Paddington 2. Not Paddington 2. That one's even, that's a good one too. I might have you watch that one. Paddington, you might throw in. <laughs> so just so you know, you gave, we on this first episode of our uh, um, inaugural podcast, two kids films, Brady. Two. What was the We're trying to the find the demographic. One? Trying to throw darts here, and Paddington <laughs> uh, is not a kids' it film. Is a it is a kids' film. It is a film for everybody. No, it everyone is a, it is a kid. It was for robbed. A kid in your heart. It was robbed of Best Picture. No, it was not Best Picture. It was barely even. I almost Great didn't movie. make it through it. It's, it's a pretty Great. classic uh, fish out of water story. You see I've seen parts of it. Okay, I only so watched Rotten parts Tomatoes, of it. So Rotten Tomatoes, ninety-seven percent critics, eighty percent on the audience award, seven point two. On the IMDb, this uh, was directed by Paul King from a story by King and Hamish McGoyle and produced by a David Hyman. Hyman? Hyman? Uh, it's basically based on Paddington Bear. The book. Yep. Kids book. Uh, it stars Ben Winshaw. Anyone know who Ben Winshaw is? He's in one of my favorite movies of all time, The Lobster. So now I'll even get more yeah. obscure. The one that kept banging his head into the so he'd get a bloody nose so that he could get the girl who got bloody nose to marry her. Yeah, that's right. That's a good. <laughs> and that's, was a like, good that's a good. That's a good show. He's, he's great. I mean, oh, was Lobster is good. Uh, Hugh Bonneville, Sally Hawkins, Julie Walters, Jim Broadbent, Peter Capaldi. I have a funny story. And Nicole Kidman. When I saw this movie, so it was. I think I watched it a month after we went and saw The Shape of Water. Yeah. And Sally Hawkins is in The Shape of Water, and in that movie, no. she has a... No clothes on. Uh, yeah, that, and she bones a fish. So, like, I went and watched Paddington right after. bone a bear? <laughs> no. And I was just like, I was like, I've seen, like... <laughs> I've seen some shit. I've seen all of her. <laughs> I've seen something about you. It's, like, weird. Yeah. So, anyway, continue. No, I have a huge crush on her. Oh, I'm, she's, she's great. I think oh, she's, she's hot. Wonderful. Like, and it's really is weird to see her in Shape of Water where you're all like, she's gorgeous. Wow. And she can't speak. And, like, 
wow, what an interesting film. And then I see Paddington, and I'm just like, oh, man, I would rather be watching Shape of Water. Really? You did not like it? I, it's not that I didn't like it. I just it boring. thought it was boring. Fair. I I thought it was really nice. And Aww. I don't know. I just thought, like, the, the story behind Paddington, that little bear, man, it makes everything happier and life... Life, it just made me feel like happy, and I think I felt like Jim needed to watch it. He needs some happiness. Needs some life. happiness. You know what I? You know what I watched after Paddington? What's that? Shape of Water. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That's a, that's a good. But now go ahead. It's your movie, so explain what what the movie's basically about. Other than because we're because we are able to talk more about it because it's older. Obviously, we yeah. don't need to do broad strokes. It's about this bear who loses his parents. Oh and yeah, and like he gets. His parents uh, die in deforestation, and he ends up living with his his uh, intellectual parents. They were taught by a researcher that came to their jungle that taught the bears English, and now these um, these bears can speak. And she's being hunted by. I don't remember that part. Oh, he is being hunted by one Nicole oh, Kidman. Nicole Kidman, who yeah, Nicole is yeah, the, the uh, movie, yeah. who wants to stuff that bear, which is funny because it's a stuffed bear. Yeah, and so yeah. she wants to make it a stuffed bear, and so hilarious. I I enjoyed the the family dynamic of him meeting the dad. I don't, I can't remember the dad off the top of my head. The actor, but he's in. Um, I think it's Hugh Bonneville. Yes, yep, that's right. He's Hugh in Hugh Bonneville. Uh, I loved him Downton and Paddington's. Abbey. Yes, that's what it is. I haven't seen that. Him and Paddington, their their dynamic back and forth. I thought was really. Fun and reminded me of my own dad actually because my dad hates animals, <laughs> literally just and, despises and them. And Jim, and so, so we have that going for each other. <laughs> so that's nice. What a relationship! <laughs> yeah, and you don't see him anymore. Anyway, I don't have any problem with him. I was just kidding. It was a it was a joke. <laughs> anyway, I got, I got no beef with Brent. So I I liked Paddington. I felt like when it came out, I missed the wave of it. I remember reviews coming out because I I saw it coming. I was like, oh, this is gonna be crap movie like it, it looks like one of those it came out in january so that usually kind of like a, a red flag there and but reviews are really good and paddington 2 is like the highest reviewed movie ever with a hundred percent score on really? rotten tomatoes wow. with like the most reviews to ever and not be dinged so that's kind of what i, was, I went back and watched paddington 1 then paddington 2 right after i like paddington 2 better but still both of them i think are swell they're swell. I'm thinking we I should bring back swell. How many swells? How many swells? <laughs> I don't. I I'm gonna just give like us three swells. Give us. I'm gonna give it three, three swells. Three swells is a is excellent. A, I wouldn't this say is a Utah it's, podcast. It's a pushing of a of a, any narrative. I just think it, it it deserved to be made, and it's a good time no matter what. Fair, it's probably fair, a, fair. a very good Sunday afternoon cable television movie. Yeah, I suspect. Me. All right, so that to uh, wrap it all up, um, we're going to give each other a film. And if you give me another kid's film, um, I'm going to make you watch uh, like something that will disturb you for the rest of your life. Nymphomaniac? <laughs> no, no, I'm not like, you're older than that. I'm not okay. like going to give a, like a 13-year-old, like, you know, that kind of thing. But um, I'm, I'm going to let Ryan decide on which of the two. I either want him to watch Hot Fuzz okay. or The Departed. Ooh, not seen either of those. Ooh, but of I've course seen, you haven't. Yeah, so. those are both. They're both good in different ways. I yeah. I say, uh, Hot Fuzz. I think you should see Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz because it's everyone's seen the uh, Shaun of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead, which is yeah. great. But there's two more parts in that. Hot Fuzz is the second one. Well, and aren't they doing one with the uh, firefighters coming up? I think are they? Is there, uh, yeah, I think so. I think um, uh, Edgar Wright. Uh, yeah, but it's not Edgar Wright. It's. Uh, his cohort that's doing the so it's not because the, the official trilogy was always supposed to be Sh- Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and World's End, yeah. and this is the second one. So this is Hot Fuzz is my challenge to you, and okay. you can watch it right now on Netflix. Okay, so you cool. don't gotta go find it. Yeah, and I didn't really consider the easy f- uh, part for me. I was watching. I can find anything. Yeah, exactly. So you can. I'm a pirate. Arr. We it's don't not... condone. What's a what's a pirate's favorite uh, letter? C. Yeah, that's good. No, it's supposed to be R, and then I say, yeah, but he fell in love with the C. Come oh. on. You ruined the joke. Anyway, oh. so after watching Enemy Mine, I was like, I had kind of this Dennis Quaid. The rookie. No. I want you to, 
I, I think it's Dennis Quaid. It might not be. Uh, Randy Frequency. Quaid. Which one? Frequency. Okay. Have you yeah. seen that one? It's a long time. Have. Long time like, ago, though. It was uh, the frequency where he plays on the radio, and it can, you can go back to the past, and he talks to his dad. Okay. Yeah, so that one I remember watching. That was one of the probably the last movies I rented at Red at Blockbuster before it went in on itself. Yeah. And what? So yeah. Blockbuster's <laughs> gone. This is the <laughs> second Blockbuster reference. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, we're we're dating ourselves. Anyway, so yeah, uh, frequency. I think it's a solid right, movie. I'm in. Watch it and. And we got we got ten minutes left. I think we should hit on some. Well, new... I've got one for you both. Okay, um, do it. Hit us. Um, I'm I'm gonna recommend one that I'm actually gonna watch. So I haven't actually seen it yet. Okay, but it's called Thunder Road. It's uh, by it Mad Max. Uh, no, <laughs> it's by a, a independent filmmaker named Jim Cummings. He's actually in town right now filming. They just finished filming a a new film called The Werewolf. I believe is what it'll be called. But this was his first feature film that he did. It's called Thunder Road. It was started as a short at Sundance okay. a few years ago, and then he managed to turn it into a feature. And I'm not going to really say much more about it. I think you guys should check Where it. Where can we You can it? see that one on Amazon Prime right okay, now. Cool. cool. So, but Jim Cummings is here in Utah right now, and I figured throw him some love because he's been hiring some local talent to, to work on his next show. Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely Thunder Road. Probably hired one of my brothers and not me. Probably. It's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> probably Nate's in it somewhere. Nate's in it somewhere. I get that a lot too. I'll get phone calls for like some of the dumb movies that I don't tell people I'm in, and they're like, "Why didn't you tell me you were in?" And I'm all like, "Because I didn't want to be in it." <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, well, I was like, "You were in Napoleon Dynamite." And I'm all, "No, I it wasn't." Scenes. And they're like, "They deleted your scene, but you're in the DVD." And I'm like, "Therefore, I'm not in Napoleon Dynamite, am I?" That is true. So, so to go, like I said, we got. Some like nine minutes left. I just kind of want to run down some movie news, just to talk about what's happening movie in the next, news? I next, love next week. Movies. The Joker trailer dropped today. It did. What'd you think of it? I loved it. Yeah? I thought it was great. I think it's fun because you can always... Um, I'm getting really burned out on all uh, superhero movies. Oh, I yeah. really am. I'm getting burned out on them. Uh, DC, Marvel, I don't give a crap about Endgame. I don't care. Um, like it. I I don't care. Yeah, that I makes at, sense. I, got I z- looked at the list the other day of like the ones that are out. And I've seen yeah. like four of the Marvel 22? universe, like of the twenty two, the whole yeah. Black, Black like, Panther. If I'm gonna watch Black Panther, I gotta watch it in three segments because I keep falling asleep. I don't like Black Panther. Huh. I just don't think it's very. It's nothing. And they're like, well, it's the first time it's a black superhero. I'm like, did you miss Blade? Did did you not? That's did, that's a solid movie. <laughs> that Blade was good. <laughs> it was. I just don't I just don't like it. Yeah. And so but the Joker I liked it because it's the story is pushing that and you can just tell from the trailer. The storyline it's no longer it's it's not a, I guess you can call it an origin story but it doesn't feel like it's connected to anything. It's yeah. it's very different nowadays because everything seems to have to have, be tied to something. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one they kind of made a way to say like, no, this is just a singular Joker movie. It's not tied to Ben Affleck's Batman. It's not tied to Christian Bale's Batman or anything like that. And it's, it's made just by Todd Phillips, Todd who, by the way, did Hangover. Hangover and yeah. Starsky and Hutch. So like, that was kind of interesting when I went back through his IMDb, and I was like, whoa, those the two comedies. It's it's really kind of fun to see the like comedic directors going into these more like serious, like big blockbuster kind of roles. You see it with the Russo brothers from Community, and then now you're seeing it with James Gunn, even in a way, and then now you're seeing it with Todd Phillips. I think it. I really am looking forward to it. It was already on my radar, radar, but after the trailer, I, I was just kind of. I'm excited. It looks it, cool. It looks like a gangster kind of vibe to it, which I I really enjoy. I think Joaquin Phoenix Phoenix is in. It is an insane person he's crazy so i think he's gonna relish in the role i don't know if and maybe it's just kind of nostalgia i don't think anyone will be able to top heath ledger just because of that kind of what what happened unfortunately what happened to him after he passed away and kind of like it's the aura you mean he took too many sleeping pills and mixed it with alcohol and fell asleep yes i mean no he went crazy i mean he (laughs) went crazy and and the character killed him well, that's that's what uh, popular culture is, but everyone took everyone too many painkillers and fell asleep. <laughs> so, anyway, the I think 
I'd like to see Joaquin Phoenix's different take on it just because he's such a method actor, actor that I, I, I think it's going to be Do really you know who unique. Joaquin Phoenix's brother was? I don't. River. So back River when Phoenix. Oh, River Phoenix. No R- way. River Phoenix. I know who this is. The guy that played Indiana Jones. Yeah. When he was yeah. Back, <laughs> in the, back in the day, he was the new superstar. Yeah. And if you actually hear the 911 um, emergency call, it's Joaquin calling the police to come save his brother. And yeah. is River older than Joaquin? R- River's the older, older brother. Okay. So that's unfortunate. Did you know they were also in their youth born into a cult? I did not. <laughs> Why do you know these things? Because I am a nerd and I watch and listen to everything. And so, if you, you want to be a good actor, just join a cult <laughs> and get out. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they were in a cult. That's why River and uh, Joaquin's original name. He didn't go by Joaquin Phoenix when he was younger. Mm-hmm. He had an actually a completely like what was he like? He had Starship or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Cre- and his sister also has one of those names too. Like they were all in a, in a cult and they had to like escape the cult. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, he, he also went crazy making the, <laughs> which one where he was pretending he was going to become a rapper. Oh yeah. What was that one? <laughs> the, he went on David Letterman. Casey Affleck. He, uh, what was that? Casey, Casey got in all the trouble for, almost didn't get to make no one. That's why he didn't show up for the, the, the Oscars is because he had all that. Uh, this is me thrown at him for, yeah. for that movie. Mm. I wasn't there. I'm not. Anyway, I'm not blaming Judge. But yes, uh, I'm very excited. But you also asked me about which one I was more excited about, Shazam. Well, yeah. So I was about to uh, for our kind of end to this. I want. I'm not going to tease Hellboy because that's uh, next week we can nah, talk about I it. Uh, see Hellboy. And this this weekend, what are you going to see? Are you going to go see Shazam or are you going to go see Pet Cemetery? Which are... so here's my problem. Sick and tired of superhero films. However, Shazam's getting great reviews, and Shazam apparently is like big, and and so I'm like, I also really like uh, Levi, Zachary uh, Levi, um, and so now I'm all of a sudden all me going, oh, I'm sick of all these super. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just like it looks interesting, and and I really do want to see it. And Pet Cemetery as a kid scared the bejesus out of me. And it's supposed to be even scarier yeah. than the than the one. And it's that was... getting great reviews, and so. so now I'm like, do I stand by and be my normal um, begrudging? Yeah, I'll, I don't like superhero films. I want to watch the only film that uh, Stephen King likes that he, that's been made of his. You know what? He doesn't like um, Shining. What does Stephen King know? It's true. <laughs> so he's an idiot. Yeah, he just yeah. wrote plenty of. Stick to writing books. <laughs> Write books, idiot. <laughs> Anyway, so, so I, that's a good question. I, I think out of the two, which one I'll watch first is probably what you should ask me. Which one are you going to watch first? I'm going to watch Pet Cemetery first because if it scares me, I can watch Shazam and right still after. sleep. That's 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 a fair. I'm I bought my ticket to see Shazam on Friday. I'm going uh, so, and then I'll probably catch Pet Cemetery later that week. Okay. What about you, Ryan? Uh You guys can uh, bring me to go see Joker. Okay, we'll bring. That's uh, October. <laughs> when does that come out? October. <laughs> October. So yeah. free up your schedule. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, let me pencil you in, and we'll go yeah. see it too. I, I I'm haven't gonna, even I'm, seen I'm it. One. Do a double. What? Yeah, I need a double. I'll watch it with you. I, I yeah, need a double like, feature because I, I got I missed it in my house right now. I, uh, it's been to the point now where I just want to like well, watch. We're all going to go over to Jim's house and watch yeah, movies. But you don't the need scary to watch movies. It, it one and out. it two because it's little kids and then I then... know. But uh, I'm, if, I know if I watch it, I'm going to just want to watch the second one right off the bat. So I might as well just wait. How, long is, the, how long is like the watch party for all of Stephen King stuff? Oh jeez, because they do like the Marvel universe. Like who did the King universe? Like. Do it yeah, in chronological so order, many, like made for TV. Yeah, I know. Right? Think about how bad agonizing it would be. It would be really bad. Oh, that would be a part of the horror. Did you, <laughs> did you hear like how long the they're South Jordan the uh, yeah, Megaplex? They're playing all, they're playing all twenty-two. Fifty-four hours. Forty-seven now? hours. Oh, gosh. Four. And I, I think it was you know, just all you back know who's to gonna back. Make, you know who's going to make more money than the theater. The guy selling crystal meth in the bathroom. Probably, <laughs> like that's an insane. That's insane. I I thought like it's a hundred and like twenty dollars to watch all of them. Oh really? Yeah. Like I was like, man, who's and I I went online to check and it's nearly sold out. It's only one theater, but like it's still 
probably like I actually 80s. tried to watch them in chronological order one time. I yeah. tried to go through them all, mm-hmm. and I was like, because I didn't, I had like three, three days off of work plus the weekend. I'm like, okay, you know, I could probably get. No, I got through. I think four of them, maybe. Yeah, I got to like <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> And I was like, "This would be like a clockwork orange for me. I would oh, yeah. have to like get my pry my eyes open. <laughs> I'd be like, there's not a chance.' Maybe what we should do <laughs> is take a camera, tie Ryan up yeah. to this premiere, and have him sit 47 hours, <laughs> and then we come back and watch or, watch him watch it. Or we see how long and what we could say before we all get kicked out. Ooh." <laughs> Like yes. how much? Just start spoiling just, the endings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man, that's Thanos a lot of, dies. That's a lot of bunny rabbits. <laughs> anyway, well, we're about out of time here on our on our inaugural show. That's so a, that's I gotta a, watch Frequency, Frequency, and then mm-hmm. I watch Hot Fuzz, Hot Fuzz, Hot Fuzz on Netflix, and you gave us Thunder Road, Thunder Road on so, Amazon Prime, on Amazon Prime, and then I'll also catch. Uh, Pet Cemetery and Shazam this weekend. And so. you can also uh you can uh you can Twitter us at I'm uh, Jimmy Smooth, G Y M M Y S M O O T H Jimmy Smooth and you are I'm Mr. Clarkster M R underscore C L A R K S T E R. I don't know why we have such hard Twitter handles. <laughs> Mine's easy. Everyone's <laughs> always Jimmy Smooth. I'm all no, it's yes. Jimmy Smooth. They're all like, why don't you just put it J I M M Y? Because then I'd be Jimmy Smooth five six seven three two. Yeah, I'm the, the only, only one. Jimmy Smooth. And, and Temple Ma'am, which you, you uh, yeah? How do people contact I, you? Yeah, I'm I've on. I've been trying. I'm to on this week. Twitter. Are you? Yeah, sure. But I don't. He's uh, Canadian, but he tweets. Yeah, I only tweet <laughs> really about soccer. But um, and the wall, the wall that we're going to make Canada pay for. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm at regular size Ryan. Ah, uh, see, that's I was trying to tweet him at a, and you can follow our official Twitter and Instagram at the Movie Hour for Twitter. It's the underscore movie underscore hour and then for twitter it's just the movie or for instagram it's just the movie hour so. cool what well, are we going to take pictures of oh well after the word we're going to take a picture of ryan oh and, yeah uh, like three <laughs> lots of pictures of ryan. that's going to get you a lot of traffic <laughs> and, so anyway here's ryan walking out the door here's mm-hmm. ryan having a drink so he's, he's the market and we should tease our guest next week as well yes um you go ahead he's your your guest so it's, well it's, it's tua yeah, well, and he has a very Tua. Samoan last name, and I don't, that's why I threw it to you to say. It. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but if I get it wrong, you'll kill me. But it's Kealoa. Yeah, is that right? I don't know. That I just sounds him, good. I just call him Tua. Tua is actually, um, he's an ex gangbanger who was in like hardcore gangs mm-hmm. who like one of those dudes that you would never ever want to mess with to. Decided to turn his life around to where now he's a motivational speaker and he's in movies. And he's just got done doing um, Samoan Gold 3 and he just directed his first film. And you can find all of them on um, Prime. I believe Hulu. I think he's on Prime. On Prime? Yeah. Um, either way, but he's just a... He's got a cool story. He's got a great story. He's a great dude. And I can't say his name <laughs> correctly and so he can Probably tell us his week. last name. But two is coming on next week. And... Um, I'll be back in October. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan, oh, is a, well, Ryan is a, a friend of the podcast, so he'll come back uh, yeah, we'll, as many times as we can't find a guest. Yeah, we'll, we'll have... We'll, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, we'll, <laughs> just, just hit me up last minute. <laughs> we'll have Ryan on a lot. He'll 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 make his, his appearance felt. So we appreciate Ryan coming on and joining this journey of ours. Pleasure. And thank you, Jim, for hiding in the back and giving some insightful thoughts. 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 Man. Thoughts. <laughs> An yeah. hour is a long time. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And you can catch us. Make sure to subscribe on our iTunes and Google Play. And we're on Spotify. So use any of those. So you're probably using it right now to listen to us anyway. But share it. Tell your friends. Yeah. Let us know how, how it is. Thank you. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>